Monerotopia Weekly News segment is sponsored by IVPN. Use a VPN to help prevent your online activity from becoming a permanent record. IVPN encrypts your data and DNS requests so your ISP or mobile network provider cannot monitor or log your online activity. Purchase an IVPN service today anonymously with Monero. I know, I know. Tony! How's it going? Hey, guys. How's everything? <laughs> Good. How are you guys? I missed you guys. I know it's been a while. We Tony, you. Were, were you taking notes? Are you going to start your own country? We we need we need a Tony Tony Topia. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's going to take time, you know, to develop it. So stay tuned, guys. So give me, um, you know, <laughs> I'd be, I'd be to Topia. I'm going to solidify Tony Topia. And... <laughs> Tony -topia. <laughs> How's it going, cool. man? Good. I got a new work schedule, so now I can okay. really do Saturdays. But I think it should change soon, so then maybe I'll be able to. But I'm I'm not sure. You're not sure. Right, well, uh, well yeah. we, we're missing you, but don't worry. So we, we benefited from moving it to Friday. Yeah, we did for, the, for those reasons. All right, man. Uh, <laughs> do you yeah. want to share your screen? Take it yes. away. Yeah. The mirror looks good behind. Yes. <laughs> 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 it set up. We made it work. <laughs> <laughs> Like every day, I feel like it's just caving in. It's getting larger. And help larger. me, Lord, help me, <laughs> help me, guys. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. Right, so, <laughs> yep. Hey guys. Um, so let's get into the news report. The first thing that I want to discuss is Fluffy Pony and um, their recent, uh, well, not recent allegations, but um, someone posted that um, Fluffy Pony is allegedly helping uh, Interpol. Um, with uh, Tracy Monero and uh, James Edwards made um, a lengthy thread discussing um, the situation and uh, Fluffy Pony and the fact that in between 2009 and 2011, he worked for a company and um, there was some fraud going on. So, um, and then this is being associated with um, and some other things being associated with things. Yeah, this this okay. guy came at him hard. Who who is this guy? James. I don't know. Fluffy was saying know. that James Edwards is a a known scammer. So I'm curious what else, or what he's what he's alluding to there. I didn't really do the research on him. But yeah, I mean, what this all boils down to is if Monero works as intended, if it's actually truly an open source project that's been vetted, right. we really shouldn't even. Be concerned if Fluffy Pony mm -hmm. were theoretically working with Interpol, right? Like, the, yes, this only works in that scenario, right? So, uh, it's it's fud. I mean, um, Fluffy Fluffy denied it, right? Very, uh, he put out right his own tweet th thread saying, you know, he, he absolutely has not uh, participated with helping Interpol in any way. But even if he did, right? Even if he literally works for them, even if he's been mm -hmm. working for them this entire time. You know, even if he's been working for some other agents, government agency, uh, the way this this technology works is that it's open source and vetted by the community and built out in the open. So nobody has an advantage uh, compared to anybody else. Right. Mm -hmm. There's any back door, uh, supposedly that that's that would have been vetted and, and discovered. So yes. it's, I mean, obviously, he has more knowledge than 99.99% of all society in the topic of Monero. And mm -hmm. it would certainly make sense to consult with him if you were trying to track and trace transactions. And mm -hmm. that would that would make sense. But to, to right. suggest that he had, I don't know, he has some kind of like 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 key, right? Some backdoor key, I think, is uh, it has it has nothing to do with whether or not uh, Interpol tried to get him to go work for them right if there's, right. If there's a backdoor key then that's that's a bigger issue right we, we should have been it should have been discovered and what he did in 2009 2011 is not really related to what's happening now so he's not being charged for something that he's done with monero and um so he made a thread and we sa he said at no point i've ever met have i ever met with and or helped a law enforcement agency or a government or an individual or government agency or a company or anyone to trace Monero. And um, he said that I remain willing to and excited to point any requester in the direction uh, of uh, resources like the Breaking Monero series published by the Monero community and researchers because I can do nothing beyond that. And he doesn't even have access to Monero's code base uh, 
you know, GitHub repo, website, Twitter account, DNS record, you know, donated funds or anything at all. So he can't even. Right. That would be the only thing that would be concerning, right? If he still had this, this higher, higher access, well, not this higher, but this, this access to, to commit, right. And then, um, and given, given these rumors, right. It just wouldn't, wouldn't make sense to have him mm-hmm. in position. Um, like, like we're saying here, it ultimately doesn't matter. Right. Um, we, you know, we, we need to assume we need to assume that that he is working for Interpol, right? That's that that's the assumption that needs to be made, mm-hmm. uh, and that Monero, the Monero ecosystem, thrives would thrive even in light of that. And it's interesting that at his insistence, um, access to things like Monero's code base will never be restored, and this is never. So he's just never going to have access to the code base ever again. Um, so yeah, he, you know. You can do your own research if you don't believe him, but you know, according to him. Yeah, but that, like we said, that shouldn't that shouldn't ultimately matter, right? Like right, then it doesn't matter. You no, know, right. anybody else can come along and, and offer to to help assisting with developing Monero, right? And they right. could very well be a, a three letter agency that's asking, you know, hey, we, we got some great ideas. You know, we want you maybe you should uh, should add this to your next hard fork. It's gonna make it more private and whatever. And maybe it may maybe you know, but the idea is that would get vetted, right? And the, the rest mm-hmm. of the community would, would decide if it if it's good tech or if it's tech that's gonna ultimately hurt the uh the nature of the utility that we're trying to build. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you know, like a truly decentralized project, um, it doesn't matter if one person is replaced. So whatever happens to Fluffy Pony in the end will not affect uh Monero. So that's one important uh factor yeah i feel bad uh, for, for him that he has to put up with this kind of nonsense yeah. I mean, he's done so much for monero he's there's these allegations against him but you know certainly innocent till proven guilty and uh have a lot of respect for everything he's done for for monero for sure for sure and uh someone wrote i'm not sure how i missed the story and how you know what we discussed and then he tweeted you miss it because it's nonsense <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, I I miss Fluffy, man. The guy he he's he's so smart, so witty. He's he was a great great spokesperson for for Monero, for sure. And he's funny. He's funny too. Oh yeah, he's hilarious. He's Amazing funny personality. Yeah. yeah. All right. But now we discuss this situation. Let's talk about the uh, CBDCs in Florida. So I'm gonna play a minute of um, this video. Okay has been introduced in the Florida legislature, and if they were to pass a bill, I would veto that bill. Uh, However, given the risks associated with the federally sanctioned centralized bank of digital currency, uh, today uh, I'm here to call on the legislature to pass legislation to expressly forbid the use of CBDC as money within Florida's uniform commercial code. This will ensure that Florida continues to be a state that supports innovation in the financial sector through the market uh, while protecting against government surveillance over your personal finances. But our legislation shouldn't stop there. Given the continued increase in Chinese influence in worldwide affairs and increase in plans to adopt CBDC worldwide, our legislation also prohibits any CBDC issued by a foreign reserve or government sanctioned central bank. This will ensure that any effort to adopt a worldwide digital currency will never occur in the free state of Florida. And finally, I'm calling on like-minded states. Uh, so, um, DeSantis is the mayor of uh, Florida, and he's against uh, CBDC. Governor, yeah. Uh, which is amazing. So, Florida is actually you know, a good state to be in uh, from the whole country. Um, with the center. So that's that's interesting and that's really good to hear that he's taking a stance against CBDCs and um things of this nature. Um, yeah, I mean we don't know, you know, is he just posturing? Is he is he controlled opposition, right? That's like right. the uh the theory, right? Uh, and then they'll be like, ah, oh, he'll eventually be like, ah, oh, cave and be like, well, I guess if we need to do the CB, you know, he'll, he'll, yeah. he'll have, we'll have a false debate, right? Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I don't who knows? Who knows? I don't think that's the case, though. I think he's uh, he's a freedom-loving individual, and he he's, yeah. he's 
he's opposed to the country moving in this direction. So it's it's mm -hmm. promising because a step in that direction is a step in the, the direction of Monero, right? I For mean, sure. basically everything he's saying, uh, his ideals uh, in, in, in these terms, right? I'm not talking about other politics, but in the way he's talking about money, uh, mm -hmm. he's basically, he sounds like a, like a Monero guy. Right. <laughs> he does. Yeah. He does. So that that's that's promising. For sure. But I wonder like how a person like him is still in his position. Because you'd guess, you know, I and I you know, I hope he's genuine in his actions, but you know, I wonder how he's still in that position after all what the things he's talking about. You know, he's because he's anti CBDC during COVID, you know, he didn't really shut down Florida. So I'm I'm curious of how, you know, he's still in that position. Because you would guess that they'll try to get rid of him, you know like this you know oh yeah, yeah well i mean uh florida is just filled with liberty loving people man so the yeah. democracy is is working in florida yeah <laughs> this this guy this guy's feeding into you know the, the his people there and i mean you live in florida you you, you know right you know much yeah. better than i do uh yeah yeah pretty is in cool. the air because compared to places like new york so yeah I mean, he's, and he's going to be running for, for pre like who knows he might be the nominated presidential candidate for the republican party so that would be right that's exciting right that the, yeah, the yeah. potential nominee and you know uh potential winner right the potential next president of the united states is out here you know speaking out strongly against cbdc's that's exciting mm -hmm. Yes. I mean, what his true intentions are, what that actually means, you know, are they going to still slip it, slip it through in some other way? Right? We had, we had the fed now that launched whatever a week ago, like yeah, yeah, at yeah. not the beginning of a, essentially a CBDC. It's not a, it's not a blockchain based technology. So it's not CBDC in, in that, in that respect, but does that ultimately evolve into what a CBDC is? Right. A ledger that the Fed controls that everybody then uses directly, like mm -hmm. so. I don't know, like like he's out here being against CBDCs, but I don't. I didn't really listen to the whole thing. Does he talk about Fed now? Probably not, right? I mean, and that just happened, right? Yeah. He's out there talking out against that and saying, you know, is this? So it's there's a lot of that going on too, right? They might try mm -hmm. to slip it in by another name. Essentially, it may not come in the form of a CBDC. It may come in the form of Fed now, right? right. <laughs> no. Yeah, <laughs> they, got, they got me to get those CBDCs. Meanwhile, everybody's linked directly with with the, you know you have your essentially have your Fed now wallet, right? Like, so who knows? But exciting yeah. to see. Yep, and some are out in the comments on YouTube. Uh, imagine Florida being becomes the first state to recognize Monero as an official currency. That'll be interesting. <laughs> it's on track, right? It's on track. It's, it's definitely far ahead of any other state in those terms. Way, right. way, way ahead of New York. You can't even purchase Monero in New York on a centralized exchange with KYC. There's no exchanges that offer Monero for sale uh, with fiat. Right. Insane. It's, it is insane. And uh, the reason why we don't like CBDC um is written in this article so essentially you were going to be forced to spend money or forced to save money um you know they, they're going to um essentially be able to change the interest rates really easily to um infiltrate negative interest rates if they want to so cbdc's will create a dystopian nightmare um essentially and this is what this this article discussed um and talked about how during the financial crisis of 2007 2008 people that's when people started to lose trust in traditional finance institutions and that's where they turned towards crypto you know in the beginning was bitcoin now people are starting to discover monero um but the thing is with cbdc is that they will be fully traceable and that central banks will be able to surveil and control financial transactions they'll be able to tell you how much you can spend in a single day which is all things that nobody i think really wants and this is all in the name of AML, of, um, you know, regulating uh, crime and terrorism. But of course, it's used to really um, control humanity. And um, now let's talk about Nigeria. So Nigeria, with Inaira, a couple months ago, their CBDC had a 0.5% usage overall because nobody wanted to use it. Now, 
they introduced oh they just um took away a lot of cash in nigeria so that now there's a cash shortage and the usage of the e naira is up to 63 percent there you go 0. 0.5 to 63 percent that's so what we're talking about right that's what we were when, that, that was the comments we were making back then right is there they'll, they'll figure out how to push people into it exactly exactly and so it's always so interesting to talk about cbdc's and countries because we talked about this a couple of months ago and i was thinking where this is going to lead and then we talked about how you know they're probably going to introduce a cash shortage mm -hmm. this <laughs> and they're doing it yeah. uh, <laughs> textbook, yeah. textbook yeah so but that, that's how that's what they're it, going it, to do it is very that's exciting to see though right we like we said we have desantis out there right like this guy is potentially going to be the president of the united states it's not, right. not far-fetched and he's out there speaking out against cbdc's and we have this great awareness globally there's this awareness of cbdc's and people being opposed to it yeah like we said uh, the, you know they'll figure out if they need they'll figure out ways to do it, but the i think it is um exciting to see that there we there is this opposition right and it's and it's building um and that gets people closer to monero to realizing the importance of monero right because you're like if you're if you're concerned about cbdc's it's because you don't want the government to control how you use your money right you don't want them to exactly. surveil it, right? And that's what that's what people are realizing. And so, once you have that realization, then you have to then your then your next step is looking around for the thing that will prevent that, right? Mm -hmm. If not, if CBDs don't, so like, what are you doing? Oh, well, I'm just gonna. You you realize? Wait a minute. Even when I'm using the traditional credit, forget CBDCs. Yeah. Oh God, we're like kind of already on a CBDC. We're all using yeah. credit cards and Venmo, and it's all tied into, you know, uh, it's a, cor a couple of corporations that are colluding, that are giving the all the information to governments. Wait a minute. And then yeah. you're like, all right, well, what could I move into? I can move into Bitcoin, right? Mm -hmm. And and then the next realization is, wait a minute, it's a completely transparent ledger, right? So <laughs> right. It's the masses. It does. It does feel like people's eyes are really opening up to these concepts of mm -hmm. being, you know, realizing that they're being mass surveilled and are concerned about that they'll be mass surveilled in terms of how they use their money, even though they already are, right? But yeah. CBDCs is even more obvious because it's potentially program, well, or not potentially, it is programmable. Um, but hey, you know, that's what like Bitcoin. It's not programmable per se. But if you can figure out everybody that's using it and track and trace them thereafter, it could effectively become programmable. When you go to make your your purchase and you're trying to buy your you know your quota of meat and you're getting denied because you know every every you know e-commerce system has built into it uh, you know uh, something that's looking at where transactions are coming from and like wait a minute this guy already met we're checking the Bitcoin ledger. Uh, looks like Doug Tumin already met his quota of, you know, beef, right? Like that, yes, exactly. did they program Bitcoin? No, but they attacked, you know, they basically used Bitcoin's shortcoming, which is its transparent ledger to effectively have that same effect. Mm -hmm. So I think people will, will come to this realization. For sure. Exciting. And we've, we've already had the uh, CBDC in the past, like during communism. And, you know, we had it in Romania, you would have tickets and then you had to write, uh, what's your um, address? Where did you buy the meat from? How much meat did you buy more than? And you had to write the specific amount, like how many grams or how many uh, pounds, kilograms, you know? Right. We've had this before. And now we've got credit cards, which is, you know, now you can buy as much meat as you want, pretty much. I mean, some stores say, you know, just buy like two packs and then you can just go back in the parking lot and go back in and buy two more. Mm -hmm. um, but soon it's going to be really way worse and like doug said you know you'll be able to only buy so much and if you try to buy more they'll know and you'll be declined so right your your, your carbon you footprint will be attached to your your bitcoin wallet right exactly and it, it sounds great you know this is for the environment this is for criminals but at the end of the day they're doing all these things and you're left you're left with a transparent house where they can see what do you do in your own house so exactly. um but now let's talk about um ethereum to monero swaps and the fact that 
um, the beta for the mainnet is um, coming soon, which is really exciting. So we have uh, Bitcoin to Monero. Now we have, we're going to have Ethereum to uh, Monero. So it's always important in case you can't get uh, Monero, like you, like in New York, for example, you can buy Bitcoin, you can buy Ethereum, and then you can just swap it into Monero, which is very important for the ecosystem and to make sure that you're always going to be able to, to get Monero. So this is huge and um, it's really good news. Yeah, yeah, super, super big news. And that's, uh, yeah. you know, Elizabeth Ethereum and she'll, she's going to be at Monerotopia. Yes, she is. Yeah, sounds awesome. like she's right on track for releasing, uh, you know, the the main net during yeah. Monerotopia, right? She said like a month away, like a, a little, right? So we're right there, a few weeks away. That yeah. Be, she might do it on stage. That'd be awesome. Yeah, last year she did it on stage, but she yeah. she, she just tested something on stage. So yeah, it's yeah, awesome. Yeah. But this year we're going to have hopefully the actual you know release that release yeah that'll be so cool <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be really cool um so now we talked about fluffy pony and monero we talked about uh DeSantis and his stance on cbdc's and we talked about cbdc's but now you probably want to meet up with uh people that are into monero or that are into <laughs> um liberty loving principles so you can actually go to chicago <laughs> and join the meetup of uh vic and uh, justin they've justin. become the organizers of the monero meetup um, uh, group which is really cool so you can check out the link and they have food and drinks provided by kick wallet <laughs> which is uh, very sweet and now for a follow along exercise do it uh, alongside me so you're going to type monerotopia.com Beautiful. Now you're going to see buy ticket. Do as I do now. You got to click on buy ticket. Uh -huh. Now we'll go up. You're going to click on buy GA tickets. Beautiful. Now, in the same time, one, two, three, four, add to cart. Nice. Okay. Um, view cart. And then you put in Tony. <laughs> you know, so, someone did use Tony yeah, like we've, yesterday. We've had a few Tonys. Oh, that's awesome. You got to get 10% <laughs> off your ticket. It's the best so, discount code by far. You know? Yeah. No, nobody's <laughs> forgetting that one. I know. But yeah, I got it the other day. I was laughing. Actually. We gave you a joke. <laughs> oh, wait. We added. Do proceed to check out for a sec. Okay. okay. So obviously, we have the Monero gateway. We prefer that you use that to make your purchase. We have now payments if you want to pay in some other crypto, and that will automatically send it to oh. us in Monero. But we added, we added, well, cash a door, right? So that they're they're in order of preference, right? Um, so if you're somebody that just wants to pay cash, we'll we'll figure that out with you. That's fine. You can do that. Uh, but we also reluctantly added a credit card. But I don't want to, you know, I don't. There's a lot of noobs out there, man, that don't have any crypto. Right, yeah. they don't have any crypto, so I don't want to prevent them from buying because Cash Adore it won't work for the. We added a virtual ticket option, right? So Cash Adore would have worked even if you wanted to come down general admission, but we added the credit card if there's somebody that wants to buy a virtual conference ticket and is a complete noob and doesn't have crypto. So that's cool. So they can awesome. Get, yeah. So now you can spend your Monero, you can spend other cryptos, you can do Cash Adore, <laughs> which a lot of conferences. Don't I'll come do. hang out with Tony. <laughs> and then you get 10% 10 off of all these options with uh, code Tony. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we reluctantly had the credit card, but yeah, especially yeah. if we're trying to push the virtual ticket. I mean, there's a lot of people that don't even have really have crypto, man. Sort of all right, cool, man. But Thank you. Thank you, guys. Uh, this concludes this week's news section. The links will be in the description if you want to look more into uh, Fluffy Pony situation, DeSantis, and all these links. And as always, we'll see you next time. Cheers. Cheers, Thank guys. You, Tony. See you next week, or Bye. we'll talk next week. Bye. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you. All right. Bye bye. Bye. Bye bye.